Now I'm joined in the studio by Axel Fuerblad, CEO of Sensogen. Welcome Axel and please go ahead. Thank you very much for having me. As you heard, my name is Axel Fuerblad and I am the CEO of the biotechnology company Sensogen. Our vision is to replace animal testing with best in class in vitro technology, to establish a new industry standard and to contribute to safer products in society. Sensayam was founded in 2010, was founded here in Lund, and it is a spin-off of the Department of Immunotechnology. We still have our headquarters here in Lund, and we also have a Sensayam Inc. in the United States. We are listed on NASDAQ First North since 2017, and we are right now in a commercialization phase that started when I came on board in the fall of 2019. We aim at break-even in 2022, and we are very happy to have a GLP certified laboratory since May 2020. Our technology guard, Genomic Allergen Rapid Detection, is based on human cells, genomics and machine learning. It has the highest predictive performance of the tests currently on the market. Our aim, as you already heard, is to replace animal tests and the areas that we currently focus on are to identify potential skin and respiratory sensitizers. Our business model where we currently focus on Europe and North America, is based on sales driven from our headquarters. But those sales are also complemented with partner sales via licensed contract research organizations and distributors. The tests today we run at our laboratory and it is also here in Lund that we do the product development. So if we just take a quick look at allergies, which is a growing health concern in the world, we can state that up to 28% of adults and 23% of children in the general population are affected by allergic contact dermatitis. If we look at respiratory allergy, over 300 million people globally are affected by asthma. What you heard about allergy is also important input when we look at the market that we act in, which is the in vitro chemical safety testing market, which is a fast growing market driven by multiple trends. The first trend is regulatory, where we see an increase of animal testing bans around the world. The second trend is ethical and based on increased community engagement, both from individuals but also from organizations and companies in their work with CSR. The third trend is scientific and based on a need for more accurate test results. And the fourth trend is economic, where there is a search for cost and time effectiveness in product development and also safer products for consumers. These different trends help us in the four industries that we address, pharma, chemical, medical device and cosmetics, and gives us a current addressable market of approximately 5 billion sec. And that is a market that is growing with approximately 10% per year. So what are we doing then when we talk about replacing animal testing with high-end technology? Well, we benchmark guard against what we call traditional in vivo testing, which is symbolized here by the guinea pig and the mouse on the screen, which has an accuracy of 70 to 75 percent uh, versus human data. And we also benchmark against the first generation in vitro, which has an accuracy of 75 to 80 percent and use single one or two uh, biomarkers when it uh, tries to identify uh, the results. And against this, we compete with GARD, which we call the next generation of in vitro testing. And thanks to the human cells, the genomics, the machine learning, and an analysis of 200 biomarkers, we can offer 90 to 95% accuracy, best in class, and also potency information, which means that we can state if a sensitizer is weak or strong. So, Having talked a little bit about the company and the technology, I would like to give you an update on where we are today. We are working, as I said before, towards a break-even target in 2022 and towards becoming a profitable, customer-centric company. We do this guided by two strategic goals, grow market presence and develop a world-class customer-centric organization and six strategic initiatives all aiming at strengthening our capabilities, processes, market presence and sales. So let's take a look at these different initiatives. Under growing market presence, we have worked very hard during this pandemic time 
to intensify our market activities, the digital and virtual ones, with support from partners and different key opinion leaders. This has led to uh, the fact that we have received important orders from both new and existing uh, customers. Here I want to highlight a 0.6 million krona order for Guard Skin and Guard Air from a new European customer in the chemical industry. And also an initial grant from RIFIM, the Research Institute for Fragrance Materials, in the United States to test several substances from them with Guard Skin dose response. And in addition to these two orders, we have a steady flow of incoming smaller orders, which leads to a gradually growing revenue baseline. But we are not happy with that. After input from our customers, we have also decided to broaden our CRO offering. And we answer to customer requests by introducing new tests for skin toxicology endpoints that complement our guard offering. And the first tests, uh, new endpoints that we add are OECD validated irritation and corrosion tests. And this expansion is part of our commercialis commercialization strategy and in line with our mission to offer the best alternatives to animal testing. The third initiative is about developing strategic partnerships. And here we have renewed and expanded our global collaboration agreement with the leading contract research organization Charles River Laboratories. We have also expanded our collaboration with RIFIM in the US that I talked about before on the safe use of fragrances and guard skin dose response. And finally, we have in entered into new preferred supplier agreements and master service agreements with global companies. And we have done that in the pharma industry, in the chemical industry and in the cosmetics industry. And it is from these customers that we have been advised to broaden our portfolio. That is why I talked about that uh, earlier. Another important uh, uh, initiative under growing uh, our market presence is of course for us to ensure regulatory acceptance for Guard. Here we work in line with three different streams. The first one is the inclusion of Guard in the update of the annex of the new ISO standard for medical devices. Here we have done what we can, so we are now waiting for the ISO organization to finalize its work. And we expect this to be completed in the fall of this year. The second stream is our MDDT submission to the FDA for guard skin medical device. Here we have replied to questions and provided the FDA with additional information. And here the aim is for the FDA to qualif qualify guard as a test for use in the development and evaluation of medical devices. And finally, which is very important for many of you that have followed Sensayan through the years, we are waiting for the OECD adoption of GARD as official test guideline. Here, the EOL ECRAM Scientific Advisory Committee, ESAC, is just about to finalize its evaluation of GARD. The next important step in the process is the experts group's report, which will serve as scientific evaluation and provide a clear indication of the group's stance on the GARD validation. The information we currently have is that the report will be released in June, so it is just around the corner. And we will of course press release the result of the report as soon as we receive it. And from then our objective is to refer to the ESAC opinion as soon as it becomes official in all the sales work that we do. Looking ahead, the next step is OECD's possible adoption of GARD as a test guideline. And here, to make sure that we don't lose momentum and keep uh, the process going, we are in regular contact since long with both the Swedish Chemicals Agency and OECD. And we have already prepared a test guideline draft that they have seen, but we are of course waiting for the ESAC uh, report to be able to include the correct final information in the draft. When it comes to our second strategic objective, develop a world-class customer-centric organization, I just want to highlight our continuous focus on sustainability. In this uh, area, we drive the message that our tests contribute to safer and more sustainable products reaching the market, to a better work em environment for the employees working in the companies in the different industries that we address, and obviously a reduction of animal testing. All of these different activities are fully in line with the UN Global Compact principles. So finally, if I can look ahead, I would like to say that we have managed quite well during this pandemic time. 
and we have had to be careful with the plans that we set at, in 2019 before the pandemic started. But we have managed wisely, and I would say that we are really ready to scale up as soon as, 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 soon as the pandemic's short-term consequences are out of the way. And while we wait for the OECD validation, we will continue to approach customers that benefit from God's high productivity during product development and are interested in the additional skin toxicology service, services that we will be able to offer through our own GLP certified laboratory. So with that, I would like to thank you for listening and open up for some questions. Well, thank you, Axel. And um, I'm here with some questions then. Um, right now, many shareholders, I think, are interested in your sales development. Mm -hmm. What would you say about the current market situation? Well, first of all, if I look back a little bit, uh, of course, we had to change the plans we set uh, in 2019, as I think that most companies uh, have had to do. But uh, as I mentioned, we have managed wisely. We have focused very much on our own direct sales to have really the first uh, contact with the customers ourselves, which has given us a lot of important input. And that has also given us access to more sales and also feedback from the customers. You know, I talked about broadening our test uh, offering. So I would say that right now we have a steady flow of incoming orders mm -hmm. and uh, we follow the plan that uh, we have set. And today most of the revenue is generated by your own sales team, but you are working on building a partner network. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, the partner network is a very important part of our business model, but we realized uh, during the pandemic that it was important for us to have this first-hand contact with the customers ourselves. So we decided to really drive that part of the business. But in the meantime, we have entertained the relations that we have with the partners and also added a few new ones because when we move forward, they will become more and more important. And I think what is also important to highlight here is that our partners, they sell more of standard tests. So when we have the OECD, uh, 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 the OECD validation or the ESAC uh, report in place, it will be much easier for our partners to offer the guard tests than it is today. Uh, you may also remember that I talked about that we have focused a lot on the product development phase with the companies and customers that we are working with, and that is easier for us to handle from the laboratory in Lund. And, and finally, you mentioned that the aim is to break even in 2022. Yeah. In your opinion, what is the key factor for that to happen? Uh, the key factor is now that the interest that we see for God, the increasing interest continues to materialize in sales. That's the first and very most important thing. Uh, the second one is, of course, the, the ESAC opinion. Uh, if that comes out, as we hope, I mean, it will be good support in our marketing and communication and also for our partners that I just mentioned. And then as number three, I think it is good that we also, you know, God is our spearhead product, but that we complement that offering with other tests that we bring into to the laboratory. So we will continue, you know, to build on these three streams and hopefully that will take us to the break even. Yeah, well, we look forward to following you and thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me.